Hey everybody! So to filter your Argos tracking data in MoveBank using the Douglas Argos filter, first we go to movebank.org and log in. And then we start by going to the tracking data map. And from here, we go to studies. And now I'll find my study. This study has data from a goose that was tracked for about a year and a half, and you can see here that we have both Argos Doppler-based locations as well as GPS data. So we can compare our filtered results to the much higher accuracy GPS locations. Next, I go to my animal ID, or if you want to edit a full data set, you can also just go to data edit from the main study, and then I open the event editor and I'm going to select Argos Doppler Shift as the sensor type. Okay, here we're seeing the unfiltered data. This track shows a goose making an annual migration from southern India up to northern Mongolia and back, and the start of another northward migration. So here on the right, we're seeing all of our unfiltered locations, and on the left, we have a table showing each record in our data set. As you might know, Argos provides two location estimates for each time point. MoveBank chooses between these pairs of locations by finding which of them results in the shortest distance through all combinations of the two sets of locations, ignoring locations with location class Z. Both sets of locations are stored in MoveBank, but here we're just seeing the better estimate at each time point, and those are the locations we'll be filtering. So to run the Douglas Argos filter, we just go to Argos, run Douglas filter. Details about how this filter works are available in our paper in Methods in Ecology and Evolution, and I'll have a reference for that at the end. Here I'm using the settings we used for the analysis in the paper. In our analysis, we showed how results change by varying the value for max redone, because this parameter has the greatest effect on the results. This parameter, max redone, refers to maximum spatial redundancy. The value you put here is a distance in kilometers, and near consecutive locations within this distance will be retained by the filter. So using a smaller value will result in more locations being removed, but those remaining locations will tend to have less error. So in general, you want to use larger values for looking at longer distance movements and smaller values for looking at more localized movements. Here, to look at the longer distance movements of this goose, I'm going to put in a value of 15 kilometers. Also notice that for this species, I've put for the min rate, the maximum realistic rate of movement, a value of 100 kilometers per hour. So once you have all your parameters set to run the filter, you just hit run. After running the filter, you'll see on the map that locations that have been filtered are now shown as red X's and locations that have been retained are shown as pink diamonds as they were before. After you've saved your filter settings, only the retained locations will be visible from the main map page. On the table, you'll see that the dataset now has a new attribute called algorithm marked outlier. All the filtered locations here have the value true, and the color of these records changes. We can also remove them from the display by just selecting hide outlier. Now we'll go ahead and save my new filter settings. Notice that no data are removed and nothing in your original data set has been changed. And you can always undo the filtering or change the filter settings by going back up to the Argos menu option. Now let's see how the filter has improved our interpretation of the animal's movement. Here are the unfiltered Argos locations. Here's the track with our filter settings. And here's the track based on the GPS. And let's also look at how changing the max redone parameter can affect results for the more local scale movement. Here I've zoomed in on a portion of the track where the animal spent a lot of time. These are the GPS data, and here are the raw Argos data. 
Here are the Argos data filtered using a max redone of 15 kilometers. And here are the Argos data filtered using a max redone of 5 kilometers. We can see from the GPS locations that the animal spent most of its time here and here. Using a max redone of 15 kilometers, we can kind of see this, but we're still seeing a lot of movement well outside the area where the animal actually was. Using a max redone of five kilometers, we remove most of these locations and our results are much more accurate. Notice also that even using a value of five kilometers, the filter was still able to recognize this movement to the south as real. So that's it. I hope this tutorial has been helpful in showing how the Douglas Argos filter works and how you can use it in MoveBank. Check the references here for more information and thanks for watching.